Um, Cherry, we see you as on the phone. You're muted now. Um, I can unmute you if you wish. Unmute me. You're unmuted. Okay. Great. And, uh, can you show up as Cherry? Yep. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. We yep. yep. can hear you. Can you un? Hi, Monette. Can you? <clears throat> How do I unmute? Can you hear us? Yes. Do you want me to leave you on? I'm going to leave you off mute just so that we can, so that you can just jump in whenever you. Uh... Yeah, I'd like that. Okay. Just wait a minute for Andrew, I guess. And, uh... <clears throat> can you hear me now? Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay. They've got this uh, three and a half inch thick notebook from business school that's come in handy here for propping my computer up. <laughs> financial statement analysis. I know it'd be useful someday. <clears throat> Amy, did uh, you happen to, do you know if A um, Andrew is going to be able to make it or? I don't, and I don't have his text, but I'll see if I can um, text his family. Okay, yeah, we're a little after seven. So we'll see. Okay, so um, why don't since we're a little bit after seven, why don't we get started? And if Andrew is able to join, he can join. Um, so do I need to give the cue to RCTV that we're good to go? I think I think he just said we're going to start broadcasting at seven, so I think we're live. Okay. All right, we're good. Okay, great. Well, welcome everybody. And uh, just um, since we're doing this remotely, uh, this is John Brzezinski, the uh, chair of the Library Trustees, and. Um, a, a couple of reminders on this format. So if we do a vote, um, just a reminder, I'll go through and we'll do a roll call vote. We'll just say your name and then you'll just you know, give a verbal signal or say yes or no. Uh, and then also, if there's any questions from the public, uh, there is an email address you can send them to that's monitored, but we will in all likelihood not be able to address them in this meeting, but in a future meeting. And that email address is rdg, admin, so R-D-G-A-D-M-I-N, at noblenet.org, N-O-B-L-E-N-E-T.org. Um, so with that, um, why don't we start the meeting? So the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from uh, May 11th. Uh, did everyone have a chance to review the minutes? And are there any uh, comments or additions? Questions? I sent my comments to Michelle. Michelle, did you get them? You're on mute. Still on mute. How about thumbs up or thumbs down? That is, go. I got them. I got them, but I didn't change anything yet because um, I didn't change anything. I can change okay. it. No worries. Okay. Okay, I, I just noticed a couple of minor typos. Monette, I'm guessing you probably saw them, so. Yep. So Could you other? share them? Could you share them and I'll, well, Michelle and I will make sure we get all. Oh, yeah, I hold do? up. I'm gonna yeah. have to go to my, um, the email I sent her. Hold on a second. Okay, so on page one with the financial update, yep. it's Ms. Lannon had no immediate budget issues. I think it might have said not. On, tell me when you're ready. Yep. Page three under reopening. Yep. Says the first sentence is Ms. Pinocchio asked. The second sentence says Ms. Lannon said that staff will be counting the patrons. Yep. 
And then um, the sentence, Mr. Grimes. Yep. And the next sentence, Ms. Lannan responded that there are no plans to resume group meetings. Next sentence, however, the library may be able to facilitate some meetings for those who cannot afford to have a Zoom license. Great. And I had a couple of other minor ones. So if you go back one page, yep. um, the paragraph that says, Mr. Brzezinski asked about plans and protocols, computer use, I think there's a four that should be there. Okay. Right. Okay. And, um, and also the first paragraph in that page, it says, Ms. Verrier asked about transporting materials from the high school. It should be from. Okay, great. And uh, I think, yeah, the only other one was the second to last paragraph, third page. Yep. It's the second sentence says, the library has a candidate for to replace so that the four okay. buttons okay. along there. So, so all just minor typos. Okay, so we can make those corrections, and if it's accepted as with corrections, I will send out um, the corrected document to Alice via snail mail, and then she can send that um, to the town clerk's office. Okay, so do we have a motion to accept the minutes as amended? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, so we'll go one by one. So uh, Alice? Yes. Okay, okay. Monet? Yes. Nina? Yes. Andrew is on mute. Can't see. We'll go to Sherry. Sherry? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, I think we have enough. Um, yes. So I think we have enough the motion for the motion to uh, to pass. Okay. So, okay. So the uh, second item is board officers and organization. Uh, so we have. Uh, Candidates for nomination. So, uh, Amy, you have to remind me. Do I just go ahead and you know do nominations? Yeah. Okay. So let me do that. So, um, and then we can have discussion. If there's no discussion, we can just ask someone to uh, to make a motion. So, um, I would like to nominate for board officers for um, secretary um, Alice Collins, for vice chair Monette Verrier and for chair uh, Nina Panaccio. So any further discussion or would someone like to make a motion to? I move we uh, go forward with the slate of offices as read. Okay, so moved, is there a second? Second. Second, okay, all in favor. So we have to go again, one by one. Um, so Alice? Yes. Hi, Mom. Great, okay. uh, Monette? Yes. Okay, Nina? Yes. Andrew? Yeah, we responded to that. Yep. Okay, uh, okay, thanks. And uh, Sherry? Yes. I think so. Yes, okay, and I vote yes. And motion passes unanimously. Yeah, we should be all set on that. Yeah, pretty good. All right, bye. Um, so, uh, congratulations, everyone. So the uh, third item is uh, calendar year 2021, holiday, uh, holiday calendar and closings. So Amy, did you want to review that or just? Um, yeah, it's pretty standard. Um, I see, um, yeah, you know, this is all assuming we're going forward with Sundays and regular days and <clears throat> holidays um, as fixed. Things that might be a little weird, um, Independence Day is on a Sunday, so we will, we will, celebrate, we will have that uh, day off on the Monday. And then, <clears throat> for New Year's Eve and for Christmas Eve, we normally have early closings, but because of the way they fall, um, the actual physical holiday is observed on those Eve days, so we can be closed fully for Christmas Eve and fully for Christmas Day. That's what happens when you, um, oops, when you fall for a, um, when you, when you have it falling on a Friday. I believe this is Andrew connecting audio wise. Um, but other than that, it's all the standard holidays. 
Any questions or comments, Ms. Dedman? Do we need to take a vote on this, Amy? Um, yes, it does need to be approved by the Board of Library Trustees. So I just had one question. Um, Labor Day weekend, we're closed Saturday and Monday. Yes. But July 4th weekend, we're only closed Monday. Yes, and I think that's because it fell on the Sunday, but we could, I could, we could change that for the whole weekend if you like. Well, I just was more curious. Um, we, Memorial guess, Day and Labor Day are the two weekends that we've traditionally um, been closed for the whole weekend for the holiday. Okay. Okay. Do you have, uh, any other comments or discussion mm -hmm. or... Um, do you have a motion to approve the calendar for the library um, holidays and closings? So moved. Okay. You have a second? Second. 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 Okay. Uh, all in favor? Again, I'll go one by one. Uh, Alice? Yes. Seconded? I'm sorry. Who seconded it? Uh, it was uh, Nina. Maybe me. Okay. Nina. Okay. okay. Uh, Monette? Yes. Yes. Uh, Nina? Yes. Andrew? Yep. Sherry, Terry? Yes, yes. Okay, and I approve, so motion carries. Uh, okay, now we have a uh, fourth item, fiscal year 2021 meeting dates. So, same thing, I guess we, uh, similarly, we have a couple of days where we need to push it to Tuesday. Yeah, um, just the, just the um, one October holiday and the town meeting, um, <clears throat> which is, starts on the Monday, that'll be subsequent town meeting. Just to point out that first July 13th, 2020 date, should that just be changed? Well, never mind. Never mind. It's fine. You could cancel it. You could cancel it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, misreading it. I guess we can always, I mean, with some of these meetings, like the summer ones, you know, occasionally we haven't, you know, we've just decided to do one summer meeting, but we can mm -hmm. leave it open and then you know, decide that the week before. Yeah, and I think that often depends on a quorum. Yeah. So if we end up not having a quorum, which is why we always do request that you respond if you're not able to attend, because occasionally during the summer, in July or August, we're, not, we're sometimes not able to make the quorum, but um, take that case by case. And this does get voted on, and this does get approved and filed with the town clerk's office. Okay, so if... Uh... If no further discussion, do I have a motion to approve the meeting calendar for the library trustees for the fiscal year 2021? So moved. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Okay, again, we'll go through one by one. Um, in the order I see you on screen. Um, Alice? Yes. Uh, Monette? Yes. Okay. Nina? Yes. Andrew? Yes. And Sherry? Yes. Okay, and I vote yes, uh, the motion carries. Uh, financial update, Amy. Um, so uh, we are running um, well under budget. We did not finish using our Sunday budget, so um, that leaves um, a fair amount. Um, we are paying out, um, this actually this week we'll be paying out for Kathy Mixis' retirement and eventually we'll be paying out for Mary McIntyre's retirement and sick leave buyback. Um, we actually will be okay, but <clears throat> for the Monday town meeting of June 15th, which is next Monday, there is a note on the, um, uh, not a note, there is a, a warrant article that has us asking for a $10,000 transfer to cover those. That was requested way back when, when we thought we might not have the money, but um, we probably will. We're leaving it on there for now just to be safe. Anything we don't spend goes right back into free cash. So it's, it's a net zero. It doesn't cost any money. So, um, but we, um, we think we actually are going to make our materials uh, spending. If we don't make it, it will be very close. And the Mass Board of Library Commissioners has um, already said that um, there are going to be some accommodations for spending for fiscal year 20 for meeting that 13 or 13% 13 goal that we have simply because they, they understand that there's, there's just a lot of shifting going on right now. Um, we are doing everything we can to spend the money, 
um, because it's, you know, with, we, we still need the physical items for when we open back up and we definitely need increase in digital items. Um, so we're doing, I think we're doing well. Um, it's just that it's not something that we're able, we're not tracking minutes minute like we normally do on June 8th. Okay. Um, the trusts are not doing well. <laughs> Our investment income is not really great, but I think that's to be expected. Um, I don't think anybody else is having that problem. <laughs> 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 Our fines and fees, we're not collecting very many fines and fees, uh, but again, that's not a source of revenue for us. That really is just regeneration. It goes back into replacements and to print. So if we're not printing, we're not buying toners, so we don't need the money from the print machines. So um, so in general, everything is, uh, I think, really as good as it can be expected to be. Okay. Good. good to hear. Uh, Anything else in the financial update or should we move on to the next item? Well, I guess the only other thing I could say on financial is that there will be a town meeting next Monday um, and we will be presenting the FY21 budget. Um, it is, you know, two months overdue. Um, and um, we are hoping that it will all go past. Um, it is past town meeting and be approved by town meeting. Um, it will go through the uh, normal discussion piece, um, line by line, and everybody, pretty much all the town departments, and I think the schools, and I know the schools, um, reduced from their original FY20 ask, um, not huge amounts, but everybody did try and find a way to um, reduce their expenses, so looking ahead. Well, out of curiosity, where is town meeting going to be held? So interesting, you should ask. Um, uh, one of the things I was going to talk about is it is primarily remotely with some um, participation happening at the PAC. They've been surveying um, the members, town meeting members, and um, I think they're expecting to have about 130 participate remotely and then another set coming into um, the pack, but it'll be small. And so we're using a combination of the webinar format, which allows us to do polls and allows, it's actually quite a production. So we're meeting every day to help that go through. Um, so it's it's going to be very interesting. Is anyone here a town meeting? Is anyone a town meeting member who's also a trustee? I'm not sure. No. Not anymore. No. no. So you can tune in and watch. It'll be very interesting. <laughs> How many nights do they expect it to be this time? They're hoping it will be one. They've actually really streamlined it down. Um, so there are, you know, other than postponements. So of, this, of the 18 articles, I think 10 of them are postponed. They're trying to postpone 10 of them. And then there's six others that, um, a few others that have to go through. But um, it's it's going to be interesting. So they're, yeah. it's um, amending the capital plan, amending... The current year, there's just, you know the transfer that I talked about, as well as some other things going on. So the capital plan um, uh, changes to FY20. Um, uh, the budget. And there's just a couple other a, a couple other few things that 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 are just financial. They're basically all financial pieces. So. Yeah. Be interested to see how it goes. I know some yeah. communities have are holding it on their football field and being creative about. Yeah, I think I think it is interesting. <clears throat> okay. Well, um, so, if nothing else, do you want to move on to um, the reopening update? Sure. Okay. So we just um, last week we finished our first um, of our our team-based um, days in the library. Um, we are broken up into two teams. We have Team Ravenclaw and Team Gryffindor out of respect for our library heritage. Love it. Um, so uh, we have a team with uh, about 17 people and a team with um, 15 or 16 people that are split up. Um, we, those of us on the first week, um, it was very interesting to be in there four days, four eight hour days, um, it was 32 hours. We are doing cleaning, additional cleaning, um, 
for this period of time where you're following guidelines for offices. Um, so anything, if you look under the state's reopening guidelines and you look under the requirements for a safe workplace under offices, that's what we were using. They're very similar to other places, but uh, things about modifying workspaces. Um, everyone's been assigned a workspace. They've been assigned a facility to a restroom facility. They've been assigned a kitchen and food prep area. They're doing staggered lunches. They are um, all doing a health screening before they come in. That's part of the requirement to come in is to complete and sign a health form saying that you haven't had any um, symptoms. Um, and, um, and we're all continuing to do meetings. So a lot of this week was about just sort of getting back into the building, trying to start processing three months of papers and magazines and books that have come in and starting the returns process, starting the reshelving process. Um, everybody that was there worked their full, their full time. There was plenty for, I mean, pretty much plenty for people to do. I will say it was exhausting. Um, so because of the way we normally work, many of these people usually only have four or five hour shifts, maybe every other day, and then maybe a Saturday full day shift. But we asked them to, um, you know, a lot of these are part-time workers. We asked them to do 30, 30 hours, uh, four days in a row. So everybody has really stepped up and um, there's been a lot of great communication. So Wednesday, we'll start our next uh, shift. Um, although the Gryffindor, they're the Gryffindors. The Gryffindors will start off on Wednesday. They will actually be starting at the high school with the big return. If you have not heard, the big return uh, should be all over your social media and library newsletters. Um, Michelle, do you want to talk a little bit about what's going to go on on Wednesday? Sure. Hi. Uh, so what we're expecting to happen um, is um, people will drive up to, in their vehicles and have their materials in paper bags. Um, and they will be going to two different lines. One line is the express lane with five items or less. And the other lane is everything else. Um, and they will be going up to an area where there's tables and they will get out of their cars themselves. This is what the safe, public safety officers um, recommended that we don't, staff members don't go into the cars. The, um, so the public will stop, they'll get out of their cars and they will um, either put their items in red, um, essentially recycle bins um, or on tables and then they will get back in their car and drive away. Um, what has been really nice about it is that um, the DPW has been involved, the facility department has been involved, um, public safety, everybody's been really helpful to us. And when everything is returned at that point from 10 to 12, um, facilities will truck it back to the library and will quarantine it in, um, we think we're gonna quarantine it in the community room for 72 hours, um, but we're not sure if that's actually gonna be its final space, but that's that's the intention for now. Um, we've been planning it and are very excited to have everything back um, and just see people in general, even just briefly. So that's the plan. So, so nobody can get any um, renewals, is that right? <laughs> Uh, no, no, no renewals. Okay, just, just checking. <laughs> yeah, just checking. That book for, for ten weeks, Jerry. I think you're all. <laughs> um, I'm almost done with my last book. <laughs> I'll finish tomorrow or tonight, maybe. <laughs> yeah, better hurry up. Um, I will. I will. So um, it is a it is a really um, it's an unusual idea. Um, we hope to have um, we we ran the numbers. Um, we have sixteen or seventeen thousand card holders, but of those, only about three thousand or four thousand have materials out. And you know we divide that roughly by families. So you could have a family that has four people and four cards, or you could have a, a single single card family. Um, we were trying to guesstimate, you know, we could have anywhere from 12 cars to 400 cars. So we're just not sure who will have heard and who will come out. Um, 
it just um, particularly, and I just would like to reiterate this for anybody who happens to be watching at home or if anybody cares, um, part of the reason, particularly for the Reading Public Library to do this is that because our library is in a residential neighborhood, the minute we start taking returns, we are very concerned that there will be a traffic, a negative traffic and safety impacts on the neighborhood. So that's part of the reason we're hoping to get this whole train going and then reduce the number of people that start coming back day to day to drop books off in the book drop. So it's a safety decision. It's a good idea. Thank you. When yeah. do you think the book drop will open? Michelle? We were talking about it and we were thinking that it, it honestly depends on how much stuff we get back and in, in the big return. Okay. Um, the assumption is that we'll start getting opening it um, the following Wednesday um, when the next when team um, Ravenclaw comes back in, but there's been no decisions made yet. Okay. We'll keep okay. it posted. Okay. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with starting to accept it. I think it's just we want to make sure that if we're closed on a Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, uh, maybe yeah. somebody should be, you know, that, that book drop easily gets filled very, very quickly. So we do just need to make sure we have staffing in place for that and it's safe for the staff to handle. Um, so those are just a couple of things that, that we need to deal with. But having said that, that as soon as we start this returns, we're already, um, you know, <laughs> people like Michelle are almost ready to say goodbye to the whole big return project and they're working on curbside pickup. We are hoping um, to, to start having people, we're calling it curbside, other libraries are calling it front door, but basically it's coming to the library to pick up books that you've ordered online or, you know, on the phone with a, a librarian or a staff member. So we're hoping that people will start being able to pick up things that they've requested, um, whether they're the holds that we've been holding on to for 12, 12 weeks, <laughs> or whether it's new requests um, on the 24th of June, which is just you know two weeks or so after the return. Um, we, we were a little nervous about starting it the week after. Again, part of this has to do with the fact that we're that at the same time we're training staff on safety protocols. So we are trying to be very cautious. Um, we're right smack dab in the middle of the pack when it comes to how quickly libraries are rolling this out. Some libraries are a little ahead of us and started in the beginning of June. There's a few libraries who will not even be starting curbside service until July. So we are, we're not too far, we're not ahead of anybody, but we're not too far behind either. Um, so um, today started phase two um, and Phase two for libraries originally said something about limited browsing in the library once you've safely undergone phase one, which we feel we haven't finished phase one yet. Um, but just today came out additional guidance from the state about specific to libraries and the MBLC is continuing their discussion with the opening um, uh, team, the reopening Massachusetts team. Two specific points I just want to um, bring up is that today the guidance says patron entry to the library should be limited to circulation desk pickup only. So that's not browsing. That is instead of picking up your materials outside, maybe you can come into the building to pick them up. Um, and there's still also for that phase two for libraries is to close all seating areas and prohibit the use of public computers, printers, and other shared equipment. So there's still a uh, prohibition on anything other than just picking up books. Um, and that is phase two. So now as we finish our phase one, start thinking about phase two, we will be looking for the phase three guidance that hopefully will include things like coming into the library to browse or coming into the library to use a computer or coming into the library for a small group program. We have seen no guidance that suggests in any way, shape or form that, that libraries are ready to take those on. Um, other guidance that you should probably note is that it does specifically talk about um, consider reducing hours to make sure that you know there's appropriate time for cleaning and etc. Um, as I mentioned, we're doing four eight-hour days. That's 32 hours of service um, that we have staffed 
Um, right now that's on that four day rotation. It's possible we could expand that to either addition, longer hours and splitting our shifts. Um, six people and six people or six people, you know, seven and seven or something like that. Um, but we also have to think about additional days an additional if, if we could squeeze out a third team. So we would like to come to you all with a proposal for how we're going to expand our hours. I don't see it going to 59 hours anytime really soon, but for the safety of our staff and the public. Um, if you all um, have discussion, would like to discuss and talk about pros and cons and, and what you see as, you know, uh, service priorities, employee safety priorities, public safety priorities, um, I would welcome your input. Amy, who is taking care of the extra cleaning that needs to be done? Our staff. Is it so the custodians are there for part of the time. But our staff are going through and we are taking a rotation. Everybody, including the director, gets to walk around with some 1D or D1 or whatever it's called, the, the uh, disinfectant and a face shield and a mask and gloves and a rag. And we have a very specific checklist of areas that must be cleaned, that must be uh, wiped down um, twice a day. And then it gets a third cleaning by the custodial service after we leave, which is they actually do more than just the high touch surfaces. They do everything they can think of in the building. Okay. Amy, um, for, I know the state has like certain um, requirements for how many hours that libraries are open for state aid. Is that right? So are they being lenient over the next few months or X amount of time to like give libraries a little bit of leeway with that? Yes, and that's a great question, Nina. Um, so there's a couple things, a couple ways you can look at it. <laughs> First of all, when we go by fiscal year, the uh, state has already said whatever your hours were as of March 15th or whatever that date was, if you were doing your hours at that time, you are good for, for fiscal year 20. So we were at compliance in March, and so we meet the compliance for this year. For Fiscal year 21 that begins on July 1st, um, the first thing to note is that the requirement for hours, and hours are 59, we generally have 60 plus some extra Sundays um, during, you know, we actually have 64 during many of those months. It's your average hours over um, your your choice of time. So basically, if we said if it was the fall to the spring, I think you have to pick six months or something like that. So if we can ramp up to that, that time sometime in September or October, maybe by the time we're adding Sundays, we might even be able to hit 59 by then. Um, a lot of this just, you know, a lot of this really just depends on our um, staffing capabilities. And, you know, um, if, if we're providing if we're only providing circulation services, we don't have a problem because we have librarians and other staff members that can assist with circulation. It gets a little weirder, a little more difficult if we have librarians or staff members that are um, at a public, if we've started to allow public into the building and we're providing either pro in-person programs or you know, things just get change a little. So we have to make sure that, um, I think one of the things that we're really concerned about is that if we do need to close for some reason due to an employee COVID, we want to make sure that <coughs> library closure is as minimal as possible. I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, if, if, we, if you took our average week of six, let's say 64 hours with everybody working plus our substitutes and whatnot on Sundays, and someone during that week had contracted COVID, it's possible that all 38 of our staff members would have to quarantine for two whole weeks. So we might possibly. So that's just how we, we're just trying to balance that out so that, you know, maybe if we did it in, again, rotations of, you know, 12, we get three rotations of 36, maybe that would work better, but those people can't work 12 hour days, you know, so we're trying to figure out that balance. What the minimum security, safety, staffing requirements are, as well as to actually do business. Amy, are you tracking um, contact tracing for each of the employees? Like, do they need to fill something out every day? 
um, you are. And what about if an employee takes vacation and leaves the state? What are you doing? Um, we are not, we don't have anything in our policy right now about that. Um, we, um, Massachusetts just urges people to quarantine if they've been traveled out of the state. It's not a requirement that you quarantine. Okay. Um, people are allowed to completely take that time. What the health screening says is the first question is, have you been in contact with anybody um, for an extended period of time who has had COVID? And that is, um, I can't, Michelle might remember, but it's like so many minutes for so such and such, within six feet for so many, for so many minutes. Like 15? If, is it 15? I think it's like 15. So it's pretty specific. And if the answer to that is, yes, I have. So you've been around somebody with COVID for more than 15 minutes, then no, you can't come back to work. And then there's the series of the symptoms. Are any of these symptoms new to you today or in the last 12 hours since, since you left the building? And um, and they have to answer that. And then they have to have a signature that says, and they, they, they have all the forms, they bring them in with them. It's their sort of their ticket to entry to the building. Um, and, um, you know, as right now, right now we, everybody who works for us want, wants to come back to work. And we do have several people who are older than 65. Um, although they've been recommended not to come to work, they want to come to work. Mm -hmm. Great. And we love them. Yeah, we're lucky. Yeah, we are so lucky. We are so lucky. So that's sort of the reopening. Are there any questions? I mean, again, you don't have to, you know, answer this now. You can think about it. Um, you know, some of this will be dictated by the state. I mean, I really wish I could just say, yeah, we're going to have an in-person story time starting, you know, July 15th. But I, I just don't know if that's, if that's feasible or if that's where we should be prioritizing our time. As the um, Reading town, uh, Emmy um, in particular, has she given any other guidelines or has she been pretty consistent with the state? Yeah, so the Board of Health, um, technically we're still closed to the public. Um, so until they tell us we're not closed to the public, nobody can go in anyway. Um, Emmy, I believe, has stepped down. Yes, uh, she has. And there's a, new, there's a new chair and I can't remember her name. It's another woman. I'll have to get you that name. Um, but They've, um, we, uh, there is a department head meeting this Thursday. We're going to be talking about a lot of HR issues, but the town hall itself is actually going through the same quandary as we are because um, just, you know, how many people can they let in the building? What is considered, you know, non-essential service that must have take place face to face and, you know, the permitting and they have town clerk stuff and there's a lot of, you know, registering to vote. So there's a lot of services they want to make sure they start, they continue and um, they will have to be letting people into the building before we, we do simply because it's a different type of work. I believe they are using office standards. The office standards in phase two, I believe, call for logging visitors for contact tracing purposes and that can be a sticking point for public buildings because most public buildings you have a right to be in with no identification or you know so I think I'm not sure what the town is hall is doing and I'll, you know I'll, I'll probably learn more about that on Thursday morning at the um at the drop-off on Wednesday um is, are you using that time to also market anything? Like, for instance, market when curbside pickup might start or something like that? Do you want me to answer that? Uh, so we had asked if we could actually pass out uh, flyers for summer reading. And they said, for safety reasons, we can't. So we're going to be doing a short but sweet um, we hope to be starting curbside, well, we will be starting curbside service uh, for the holds um, on June 24th. So we're leaving it really at that. Like a sign or something that you're gonna have that cars no, go by? We're, or? Really, we're literally just gonna tell people that we don't have oh, okay. to there yet. We, we have That's pretty low to tech. Go. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be that way, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it, good. Yeah. I have to say that, you know, 
the public safety has been very supportive of us and they, but they've, they're also very concerned about our safety. You know, mm -hmm. they are very concerned about making sure we have signs that say, stop, put your car in park, turn off the engine, <laughs> get out of the car <laughs> and a few things. Um, because they, they're, you know, they're not sure people will think to do all of those things before they get out of their car and try to empty their trunk of materials. So. Um, they, I, I understand their, their caution. Their caution is let's focus on what people came to do and that's, let's not try to confuse the, <laughs> the return system. Um, we wanted to. I also think like, I think this plan that you guys have, I think is so good because it is really so step-by-step. Step. I think, you know, everything just seems like it's evolving kind of day by day. So I feel like the less concrete information, not that we're trying to withhold anything, it's just, it's an ever evolving situation. Um, and I think everyone's kind of watching numbers and how are things progressing with the state reopening now. And, um, so yeah, maybe we'll be able to start offering some in-person stuff in the summer, but we don't want to, you know, get people's hopes up and then we're dialing it back. That's so hard. So I think the plan is, is really thoughtful and really keeps the safety of the town, but also the staff and the whole community in, in mind. So I think it's really good. Uh, one thing actually that was in the guidance and we will be talking about with curbside um, is that they there was a recommendation, if at all possible, to provide specific hours for vulnerable populations. Again, it's not that we would be checking IDs like, are you over? <laughs> Do you have a medical condition? Um, we're not going to be asking those questions, but we could we could think about shifting some of our hours again. So, you know, like a couple of days we're open early and a couple of days we stay open late. So, so we do want to talk very specifically about those hours, it, you know, whether it's what we start out with or whether it's something we end up evolving into. Um, but that is, that is one of the, one of the guidance pieces. So, um, I think that's it for reopening, unless you have any other questions or comments. Yes. Uh, if if no other uh, discussion, uh, thank you, Amy. Great great update and uh, great work on this. Uh, other business. I, I I have a few things, but I, Cherry, do you have anything? Uh, no. Okay. Um, so this is sort of I guess in lieu of a director's report, which I frankly just did not have the time to um, to write and get done to you out to you. Understood. Um, so my first topic of other business is um, the Reading Public Library's response to racism. Um, I think like every other department in town, and but a human being in our country and in the world, um, we've been really impacted. Um, we've tried to make sure that our staff is talking and listening and actually more listening, <laughs> reading, um, but also that we're addressing the issue of racism. Um, I believe I sent you all Miss Olivia's book recommendations, which was a compilation, um, but it was a beautiful video that in a very earnest and heartfelt um, uh, uh, list of recommendations that she compiled from other staff members. It was not just her, but other people as well. Um, but also that we have been asked to be a sponsor, although we don't have to contribute any money or actually any people power to the rally going on this uh, Saturday, the 13th, which is from um, the sponsors. Uh, the main coordinators are from Reading Embraces Diversity and the HRAC, Human Rights Advisory Committee. However, the other sponsors are the Teachers Association and the Reading Public Schools and the Reading Public Library. And so they just really asked um, for the Reading Public Library to put their name um, behind this um, event, which, um, you know, I, I didn't see any problem with. I guess if you do have a problem with it, please let me know right now and I'll withdraw, <laughs> withdraw our sponsorship. I actually will not be able to attend, but um, was going to be talking to the staff about it and just make sure they understood that they could attend if they wished, especially if they live in town. Um, I think these events are important to keep the conversation going, um, the education and information that we communicate with people and provide and support is not a one and done, it's an ongoing practice, it's a daily practice. Um, we are also encouraging and doubling down on our staff learning opportunities. We originally had a full day staff development scheduled for the fall. 
Um, some of that has gone awry because we don't know if we'll be able to do that kind of in-person training. Um, however, we are talking about ways that we can bring in more frequent uh, learning opportunities for our staff, whether it's discussion or listening. Um, and we are exclusive, almost exclusively a staff of white women. And um, it is our work, not um, people of color. It is not their work to educate us on our privilege and our understanding of racism. So it is our work and we will do that. So um, the staff and the leadership team have committed to that. And also I have been um, trying to, amidst all of this, figure out how we can revive our Pulse of Red and Conversation and our Conversation and Content series. Originally, our plan was to launch something this year, um, and our first partner was going to be with the police department to do a content and conversation focused on how safe we are in our community and concerns about safety. I don't think we're too far off from continuing that mission. I'm not sure that the police department is in a space. They still don't have an assistant police chief. Um, I'm not sure they're in a space where they're ready to partner. They have a lot of other things they're dealing with, so we're trying to be sensitive to that. But having said that, it, there is still um, a lot of momentum and a lot of energy to have conversation in our community. Um, there's still, the, the, you know, some um, divisiveness and some tensions that I think um, we can continue to talk about and identify. Um, so I am working on that. We all, not I, we, we all are working on all of those things. Um, and as much as we're working on opening the library, um, we are concerned about making sure that um, we, the library, are a good citizen um, as part of this town. So to that end, um, as I mentioned earlier, the library is assisting with town meeting. Um, one thing I didn't mention earlier is that I am the pollster. So I am the one who is creating the motions and the amendments on the fly. I will be creating motions for amendments and things like that, and then launching those and working with the town clerk and the moderator very closely. We are meeting every single day. Um, at one o'clock and we are doing tests. And then on Saturday, there will actually be a trial uh, town meeting where we're gonna ask town meeting members to call in just to make sure most of them can get in. And then the day of town meeting on Monday, uh, the 15th, there will be a group of tech people in the library um, and they'll be doing the, the technical support for the library. I mean, for the town meeting members. Also with the library being a good citizen, I've been working with the town clerk um, town hall is not set up to do early voting in a socially distanced and socially responsible way. We have two elections, one in September and one in November. Um, I have been talking with the town clerk about reserving the down ground floor, particularly the community room for the uh, early voting and um, probably the conference room as well, just for their administrative side of things. The library would not be staffing this, it is simply using it as space. So the town clerk would be responsible for letting people into the building. And you know, um, we would maybe even just use a separate entrance for the voting. We might use the side entrance. Yeah. Um, we would not, we would wanna be very clear that if you came to the library to do early voting, it was not the same as coming to do whatever form of service we are able to offer by late September and late October. Um, it will be completely separate. Um, I did bring this up with the leadership team. Um, you know, I guess it's possible we could be trying to do some sort of programs by by um, September and November. However, um, elections are a really core part of our civic uh, responsibility, and we feel that the library should play a role in that, if in in aiding uh, people to come in and make sure they are casting their ballots. Um, in these next two elections. So um, we will be using town space for that, as a library space for that, for that town event as well. Um, just a couple other things, and <laughs> hopefully we can be out of here. Strategic planning, remember that? Um, that contract that we said, it's still going on. Um, it's just taking a lot longer. We have, dis we have got permission to uh, file our annual, um, I'm sorry, our strategic plan later. The MBLC is accepting everything later. I think we got an extra six months. Um, uh, but uh, we've given them all of a lot of data and they've done some um, market, uh, I'm not sure what they call it, demographic and market stuff um, with all of the patron data that we've, um, anonymous patron data that we've given them. Um, the next, um, 
piece is to do um, a smaller stakeholder meeting and I am looking for two trustees to volunteer to be on a remote meeting with our um, with our strategic planners. And it would be this stakeholder group, they would like to keep it to about 10 people. So the idea, the first pass was a couple trustees, a select board member, and we were gonna start with Ann Landry, who's our liaison, a town manager, um, somebody from FinCom, if they're interested, we have a liaison with FinCom, that would be uh, one reason to invite it. Uh, at least two residents and at least two other staff members. I would not participate, I would just simply help facilitate. So we would look for staff members, um, maybe a newer staff member, maybe, you know, maybe a librarian and a paraprofessional. Um, we could, I think, have up to three trustees. I just, obviously, we have to be very careful about quorum. So I think that's why we started off with two. Um, I don't know if you want to nominate anyone now or if you just want to kind of pick amongst yourselves um, or if nobody wants to do it, I have to appoint people. No. <laughs> Anyone that I think it might be a good I good. think it might be a good idea to give people the time time to think about it. Okay. And so I will get back to you. Okay. I will look to our new president. Yeah. So I will look to Nina to call, please contact Nina and um I will look for um <laughs> Nina and then and Mona and uh, the two of you as the chair and vice chair to uh, let me know who will be participating um, from our side. I will also let you know what the time is because some of you may not be available, but thank you. Um, the other two quick things, three, three things, sorry, I have, um, I just want to let you know, and again, interested in, you know, working with how we're working with other departments. Um, the Reading Coalition, which was formerly our CASA, reached out to us. They had a grant with the Mystic Valley um, services to donate books to local libraries on substance abuse and mental health. Our teen librarians and children's librarians went through and found some items that they would wanted to add to our collection, targeted at children and teens. I think we actually had a couple, a couple adult books that very specifically dealt with substance abuse and mental health, and um, those are being donated to us uh, from the Reading Coalition, and we we thank them very much. And they're just they were really excited to be able to. Um, contribute to um, increasing awareness and education in those two areas in our community. Um, along the same lines, um, we are working with the Reading Public Schools. Um, someone here might know Ms. Carl Panacchio uh, from the Reading Public Schools English Language Learners Program. Um, Ms. Panacchio, the other Ms. Panacchio, um, is, <laughs> has been very gracious and she is a connection with our English um, language families in the in the town. Um, there are 19 languages, there are about 90, 51 active and then another 40 something uh, other students that she tracks. So there's quite a number of students and families where English is not the primary lang language spoken at home. This is a target group that has been on our action plan um, that we wanted to reach out to. We have an intern, Olivia Blumenschein, um, and she and um, Carla and I and some other librarians have been meeting. I think we've narrowed down the project. We had a project all selected back in February um, that Olivia was going to work on, and that has um, completely changed because that was getting everybody to come to the library and work on art projects and do some other things and very interactive with people in the library. So we have, um, once again, had to change directions on that. Um, Olivia will be working on a multilingual virtual tour of the library, so a, a tour of a virtual tour of the library that will have translated um, and subtitled in multiple languages, available in multiple languages, and also um, a very um, sort of shortened version of that will be a very simple make your own picture book that we're going to do on our library, on it's called My Library. Um, that will also be translated into several languages that we can just mail out to these families and have printed up um, in some sort of nice format. Um, and our hope is to, um, uh, the goals of this project are to help families feel as though they belong in our community, as that they, so that they be also become more aware of the resources that they have and that they recognize the library as a safe and welcoming place. So, um, Olivia's working on that and um, we're very excited. 
Um, finally, um, we come to personnel. This is always the hardest thing. So thank you to those who came and said goodbye to Kathy Mexis. Um, that was a, a wonderful event where we had everybody drive around the parking lot and honk their horn several times. We will be doing the same for Ms. Mary McIntyre. Mary's been with the library for 30 years, um, even longer than Kathy. I don't have the exactly, I think we did pick the date today, Ms. McIntyre, 2nd at 2 o'clock or the 23rd at 2 o'clock. I'll get you that information in a specific invite. It will be a drive around um, again, once again, and it will be coordinated with police and we'll have, you know, horns honking and sirens blowing. Um, she will get a street sign and she will have flowers and we will do all sorts of wonderful things like that. Um, but that is coming up in another week or two. Finally, um, today we received um, a resignation from Megan Ebbett. Megan joined us about a year ago. Um, Megan's family is moving back to Virginia. Um, she is following her partner back there. We're very sad. She is extremely sad to leave us and we are very sad to see her go. She has, if you've ever seen Miss Megan's story times, they're the best, um, her virtual story times. Um, it is not, um, there's never a good time. Um, we'd like to think the time that she's had here, she will take a lot of things that she's learned and go make another library a bigger and better place. Um, that also means <laughs> We will be searching for a new children's librarian mm. on top of trying to open and everything else. So um, nothing's ever easy. We still have a tentative you know, candidate to replace Kathy. We have no hiring plans to do with Mary's retirement because we're still waiting to fill Kathy's position. And at some point we are gonna have to fill Megan's position. We will just simply take this one position at a time, one group at a time. This is not unusual um, to have this turnover, um, two of them retirements. I will also point out that we have a number of people, like I said before, who are, who are either 65 or older. So I would not be surprised if we don't, if, I would not be surprised if we see a few more uh, retirements coming down the line, um, uh, not out of, I, I don't think, although I'll be sure to ask, I don't think out of any um, uncomfortableness working for us or un, not being happy working for us. I think it will just simply be that people are sort of reaching the time when they um, would like to retire. So um, it's never fun to say, but that's that's our personnel situation. So when does Miss Megan leave? Miss Megan will be leaving, I think, Maybe she was the June 21st. Oh, no, sorry, it's July 10th. July 10th is her last day. Okay. So, so, but we will miss her dearly. She's just a bright, she dances everywhere. She makes everybody want to dance. So she really keeps, she's a very upbeat, wonderful person. She's a great children's librarian. So it's, a, it's kind of a blow, but we'll find somebody else. Yep. So any other questions? We, we've been busy. <laughs> Uh, just out of curiosity, did we get any emails last month uh, through the meeting? Yeah, no, not last month and uh, nothing today. Okay. Um, yeah, we don't, I guess we're just not quite as controversial yet. <laughs> Let's keep it that way. <laughs> so, um, anybody else, I mean, other than saying hi to everyone, is there anything else to? Hey, what um, did anything is Andrea Fiorillo's grant going to happen? Is that postponed or what? Did that just disappear? Yeah. Do you know what's that's happening good, with that? That's a really good question. I believe she is still trying to figure out how to do some of these things remotely. But first of all, I think some of her speakers have fallen through because they're not they're not they're not sure what's going to happen. I have the check on my desk. It was issued a couple months ago and I have not wanted to deposit it because I feel that the mass humanities, you know, they're not just overflowing with money. And if we're not going to honestly use the money the way we said we would, um, I, I have not wanted to deposit that into the town's uh, grant account. So I will check in. That's an excellent question, Alice. I will check in with Andrea. Um, I know she wants to do some form of it, even if it's only in like September, October and November when we're doing, when we should be voting. Um, but if it's gonna be that truncated, um, we, 
we won't necessarily be using grant funds. We may just use our regular town and friends and foundation funds to, to, to support what we can and then return the check to Mass Humanities. Um, it's just a shame because it was really, it was the best grant they've ever seen. Oh, yeah, undoubtedly. Any, uh, anything else? Any other business? Anyone, everyone, or anyone wanted to discuss? If not, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, so we'll do the roll call again. Uh, Alice? Yes. Yes. Manette? Yes. Nina? Yes. Andrew? You did. <laughs> oh, he's on mute. Uh, Jerry? Yes. Yes. And I vote yes. So we are officially adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye, everyone. Yes. Bye, everybody. Yes, everybody. Yes, everybody. Yes, everybody. Yes, you voted yes. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.